You may have thought that money and economics are concepts only known to man, something that differentiates us from animals. But what if we told you that you were wrong? A study made by a team of economists and psychologists from Yale revealed that capuchin monkeys can be taught to use money. And once they understand what money is and how it can be used, their entire society falls into chaos. But before we start, please hit the subscribe button to never miss out on any of our videos. In 2005, economist Keith Chen and psychologist Lori Santos decided to team up to conduct a controversial experiment. They wanted to teach monkeys how money worked and see if the decisions they made would be similar to the decisions humans make when it comes to finances. They selected a few capuchin monkeys and isolated them in a large 750 cubic foot cage in which they would live for the following months. They selected these monkeys because they are closely related to humans and are considered to be one of the most intelligent species of monkeys. Since monkeys don't use money, the two researchers were faced with their first hurdle. How were they going to teach a bunch of monkeys how money works? The first thing they did was to create the monkey money. They made several small, round pieces of metal that looked like a coin and named it a token. They then made a second, smaller chamber next to the main monkey living area. This small cage was made of a transparent material and had a few holes in the walls. The researchers called this cage the monkey marketplace. Every time they opened this chamber, they placed a basket with tokens inside of it to teach the monkeys that they had to enter the monkey marketplace to get the money. At first, the monkeys just picked up the tokens, looked at them, and sometimes threw them against the cage wall. They had absolutely no idea what the pieces of metal were meant for. However, the researchers then stretched out their hands behind the transparent wall with the holes in it, and every time a monkey with a token was inside of the monkey marketplace, the researchers would take the token from the monkey and give them food. The team hoped that, by doing this, the monkeys would realize that they were getting food because of the tokens. As time went on, the researchers stopped directly taking the money from the monkeys. They just left their hands outstretched behind the transparent wall with the holes in it. The researchers would have food on their palms in such a way that the monkeys could easily see it. They did this to see if the monkeys would keep on waiting for the researchers to take the tokens from them, or if they would independently take a token and give it to the waiting hands with the food. Surprisingly enough, the monkeys quickly understood what they had to do and started to give the tokens to the waiting hands. There were a total of three waiting hands in the monkey marketplace, one with apples, one with grapes, and lastly, one with jello. During this first phase of the experiment, the monkeys would go into the marketplace cage and would usually buy the same food of the three available options. Which food they bought varied from monkey to monkey. Some preferred apples, others grapes, and others jello. Once the researchers saw that all of the monkeys had mastered how to trade the tokens with the waiting hands, they decided to start phase two. The team began to introduce price shocks to the monkey marketplace. In this case, they would double the price of the favorite food for each monkey. They expected that each monkey would just go and spend all of the tokens on their favorite food. However, this wasn't the case. The monkeys responded rationally to these price changes and bought more of the cheaper food than of their favorite food. They were budgeting, like when you go to the supermarket and buy cheaper foods because you want more food instead of just a little bit of your favorite food. Well, these monkeys were doing exactly that. What's interesting is that this meant that the monkeys were actually thinking about their finances and about what to buy when the prices changed. So far, everything seemed to be going great. But one day, something happened that shook the entire research team. As they were preparing for the next phase of their experiment, the team opened the marketplace for a monkey called Felix, and that's when everything went wild. Felix quickly grabbed the basket with the monkey money and threw it out of the marketplace into the main cage. He then ran outside of the marketplace only to find that the main cage had turned into a war zone. Monkeys were fighting over the tokens left and right, and once the fighting had settled, Felix was one of only two monkeys that didn't get any money. 
The researchers then decided to place some food into the marketplace cage, and to everyone's surprise, Felix quickly started to exchange the food that he took from the marketplace for tokens. Basically, Felix had turned into the first ever monkey salesman in the history of monkeys. But this wasn't the end of this madness. One of the male monkeys then went on to give a female monkey a token. The researchers first thought that it was an act of altruism, giving money to the last member of the society that didn't have any. But they were totally wrong. The two monkeys started to groom each other and then went on to mate. So, in the same day, the researchers observed what we could call a bank robbery, a prison break from the marketplace, a fight over money, the first monkey salesman, and the first ever exchange of money for services in a monkey society. This showed the researchers that in a basic economic environment, monkeys would act in the same ways that humans would, buying at better prices, making decisions that benefited them, stealing, and even buying services. But now the researchers wanted to take it a step further and know if the monkeys would also make the same mistakes that humans do when it comes to finances. To be more concrete, they wanted to test the two most common biases in how humans handle finances. These two biases are the idea that the average person sees money in relative terms, meaning that we have a hard time when it comes to analyzing financial transactions, and the concept of loss aversion, meaning that we will try everything to not lose money. To explain this, we will show you an example. A person gives you $1,000 which you can keep, but then tells you that you have to decide between the two following options to gain even more money. In the first option, you have to flip a coin. If this coin lands heads up, you won't win anything, but you get to keep the initial $1,000. However, if it lands tails up, you get an extra $1,000 and walk home with $2,000. In the second option, you don't flip a coin and get to keep the initial $1,000 plus another $500. Without any risk involved, you would walk home with $1,500. What option would you take? Various studies have shown that the average person would opt to play it safe because there's less risk involved. This way, we have ensured a safe way of gaining money. However, now we will change things up a bit. This time you start with $2,000, but have to decide how you're going to lose some of the money. In the first option, you again have to flip a coin, and if it lands heads up, you will have to give $1,000 back. If it lands tails up, you get to keep the full $2,000. In the second option, there's no coin flip you only have to give back $500 and end up keeping $1,500. What option would you choose this time? Let us know with a comment below. As strange as it may be, most people will opt to take a risk this time and try to hold on to the full $2,000 by selecting the option in which they flip the coin. Even though the problem is exactly the same, with the same odds and the same results, we are more likely to risk if we could lose something. This is an issue that has caused great damage to human economy. For example, people who have lost some value on their homes won't sell even though it's obvious the price will only keep falling. Stock traders whose stocks are losing value will not sell because they believe that they will come back up and that they must play it risky to avoid loss. On the other hand, these same people will not risk more when they could sell their home or stocks at a higher price. Basically, we won't risk when we could gain more, but we will risk to avoid losing more. Because this is such a strange and inexplicable problem, the researchers wanted to see if monkeys would act in the same way. And, as strange as it may be, the monkeys acted in the same way a human would. They were faced with the same test as described before, but instead of using money, they used grapes. In the first problem, the monkeys chose to always get two grapes instead of risking more to gain a third grape. And in the second problem, they chose to risk more to not lose two of their three grapes. Again, both of the problems are the same, and again we can see that these monkeys have the same biases as humans when it comes to relativity and loss aversion. It would seem that these problems with money are deeply ingrained into us, and for some reason, also in monkeys. 
This, combined with the other tests, has shown the researchers that these small brown monkeys, which have a tiny brain, have the same financial intelligence as the average human person. Please like and subscribe for more interesting videos about all sorts of interesting subjects. Let us know what you'd like to see next with a comment below. Video narrated by Eric Peabody.